I got molested. Mm. Did you? Welcome to my new top eight unique, fun, and broken builds, part four. Alrighty then, let's jump right into the video. Up first, number eight, the ultimate god killer. This is a faith build using any and all black flame and black blade attacks. The main weapon is the God Slayer Greatsword, of course, of course. After using a couple of fire type buffs, this weapon skill will melt the cheekies off of any boss that's vulnerable to fire damage such as the god himself, Radagon. It's a three-part attack combo, getting progressively stronger with each swing. Then we got Black Flame Incantations, all of which are able to charge up for bigger and better damage. And we can't forget the Black Blade spell. This gotta be the most badass spell in the entire game. If you have the weight load for it, you can wield the Black Knife Dagger in your offhand. First of all, you can quickly switch over to it and use its weapon art. Just one use of that and boom, damage. Secondly, you can use it for some quick stabbies, as it will be faster than the greatsword. The only real downfall of this attack is that it's slow as molasses. We're gonna need the strongest defense and the highest poise we can get, because this weapon art is wild slow. We're definitely gonna tank through a lot of damage and trade hits, but it's totally worth it. A full swing can usually get up to 4, 5k damage and even break stance. So, because we need heavy armor, and because the greatsword itself is a big old chubster and weighs so much, we'll need at least 25 to 30 endurance. The God Slayer sword mostly scales with dexterity, but I prioritized faith a little bit more to increase the power of the incantations. Up next, Spiked Mike, aka the Spiky Mike Tyson build. I wish one of you guys had children so I could kick them in their fucking head or stomp on their testicles. Yeah, okay, thank you. We're doing a little boxing with the best fist weapon in the game, the Star Fist. This build is absolutely bonkers when done correctly. I was able to beat the dust out of Radagon and the Elden Beast really freaking fast. There's lots of ways you can set this up, but after many days of experimentation, I have found that the heavy affinity with Cragblade and wearing strong armor is the most practical setup. Strong defense and high poise allows us to tank through hits so we can get up close and focus on charged heavy attacks. When combined with Cragblade, this makes for great damage and easily break in stance. We want to buff up charged attacks with the Axe Talisman and Spiked Cracked Tear. Then buff successive attacks with the Winged Insignia and Thorny Cracked Tear. The entire fist moveset is just so fast that these consecutive hit buffs will be constantly in effect. One full heavy combo is 4 strikes, so boom, right there you already got the successive buff activated. Now, if you like to use Endure instead of Cragblade, that is effective also. The Endure weapon art is the more defensive playstyle. This gives you 3 seconds of safety, allowing you to slide right up in the enemy's booty, minimizing damage. When comparing Endure against Cragblade, I'd say switch back and forth between the two skills for different situations. Instead of the heavy affinity, you can try using the cold infusion for that frosty smackdown. Full level 80 strength, high endurance for heavy armor. I'm wearing the Omen Smirk mask because it's absolutely beautiful. The three talismans I highly recommend are Axe Talisman, Winged Insignia, and Urtree Favor. But the last one, you can use Bull Goats, Millicent's Prosthesis, Lord of Blood, whatever you prefer. By the way, if you do end up enjoying this video, be sure to drop a fat like and comment your thoughts or opinions. I want to read them all. Number 6, the Uber Tryhard. Yes, that is the name of this build. It's a very simple setup. Little to no armor, wielding a blood-infused greatsword. And I know, I know it sounds like heresy, like blasphemy. I have nothing to do with such idiocy, such blasphemy, such ridiculous nonsense. To take the beloved, iconic bonk weapon and desecrate it with the overpowered blood loss effect. But that's exactly why this is so perfect for this build. It's the best of both worlds. As an uber tryhard, we don't even need armor, because we have already been through the process of getting good, so we are confident that we can dodge every single attack that comes our way. 
Therefore, all we need is, say, raptor's black feathers and a fashionable leg piece to match. In order to proc bleed, we want to strike as quickly as we can. That's why I'm using Barbaric Roar. Not only does this raise my attack power, but it gives me this 3 strike combo, which is the fastest moveset we can get with this sword. And if you can fully charge up this heavy combo, oh mama, you're really laying the schmack down. Though, this is quite risky. The long animation leaves you open to get schlapped. So, if you don't want to use Barbaric Roar, I recommend Lion's Claw instead. To be honest, Lion's Claw is much more practical and effective. This is the real money shot right here. You can pop it off over and over, plus gives you hyper armor. Which is very good here because we have no poise. As an uber tryhard, of course we're going to use whatever consumables we have to buff ourselves even more. The tasty exalted flesh or uplifting aromatic. I only got my strength at 45 because I plan on using the strength not crystal tier, which will boost my strength up to level 55 right at the soft cap. As an uber tryhard, you gotta perfectly strategize like this. When using Barbaric Roar, I say use Axe Talisman and Claw Talisman. When using Lion's Claw, I say Shard of Alexander and the Green Turtle. Number 5. Rotten Warrior. Got double rotten hammers with poison and or frost infusion. This is the triple stacker passive effect build in today's video. We got one cold rotten hammer using Horfrost Stomp, and one poison rotten hammer using Poison Mist. Got the Poison Mist on my left hand though, because typically you really only need one good use of this, and you can easily poison the target. Then the Horfrost Stomp in main hand, so I can continue to reuse it. It seems like a gimmick build, but it is really not. This is actually very deadly and melts through most bosses. You get both Poison and Scarlet Rot running at the same time, and you just watch the enemy's life be sucked away. The thing is, you can only get one Rotten Battle Hammer per playthrough. So, if you do not have two of them, don't worry. You can simply use the same strategy, but with either the Great Star's Hammer or just the regular Battle Hammer, like you see here. You can enhance it with Rot Grease. Use Poison Mist on your left hand to poison it up, then coat right hand with Rot Grease. You got double farts ready to go. But you can mix it up as you please. You can go bleed infused, cold infused with crag blade. Different enemies have different resistances. So mix and match however you want. The hammers mainly scale with strength. So make sure your strength level is at least 60 to 80. Then I have a bit of arcane to increase my poison buildup. Claw talisman and rot exultation. Number 4. Pyro Necromancer aka Death Reaper. Using all death type weapons or spells makes for a badass playstyle. Here we mostly focus on Ghost Flame with the Rancor Death Spells, Death Poker, and Helfin Steeple. Just look at that, look at that fucking sword man. Lord have mercy I'm about to bust. We got this insane power stance of these two Ghost Flame Greatswords. Helfin Steeple in left hand, enhance it with the weapon art, then switch back to the Death Poker, so we can attack with its unique skill. This will be dealing magic type damage and proccing frost. Great for breaking stance too. Then tucked away, we got the Prince of Death Staff. We can swap it in and use the Rancor Death Spells. Tibia Summons is considered a Death Spell as well, so... Yeah... You can also use the wild card weapon, the Family Heads Flail. Everything about this weapon just screams death. The anguish of a spouse and children invites accursed wrath. Damn, that's crazy. This weapon scales with intelligence, and its unique skill isn't half bad. I wouldn't say it's great, but it is good enough to use just for fun. My stat levels are all over the place. Prioritize intelligence, as our great swords mainly scale with intelligence and dexterity. Congratulations, my fellow jabroni. You have made it into the top three. Let's go! Here we have the Blessed Brawler. Super tanky defense with the heaviest armor we got, using the Holy Fist weapon, the Cypher Pada. 
Having a strong defense allows me to get up close for successive attacks with the Cypherpata, while also attacking with holy type incantations. This combination deals massive holy damage. That's what this build is all about. Totally holy. Drop the Elden Star spell and charge right in. Besides the Golden Order spells, which use faith and intelligence, there's only a few other incantations that deal holy damage. Black Blade, Elden Stars, and the Holy Bubble. That's it. These are all the spells that I am using. The Elden Stars incant seems underwhelming at first, but it's secretly great at dealing poise damage. The little stars are weak, but firing all together can break down the enemy's posture. Combined with my Cypher Pada's thrusting weapon art, we can easily break stance on most bosses. What's so perfect about this setup is the fact that neither the Cypher Pada nor Erdtree Seal weigh anything. Zero weight between the two. Also, they have no stat requirements besides faith. Nothing else, just faith. This allows us to wear the heaviest armor and focus our stats directly into faith, vigor, and endurance. That's literally all we need. If you want to be even more invincible, combine Blessing of the Erdtree spell for healing over time, plus the BEA beautiful Godskin Swaddling Cloth, allowing successive attacks to also heal you. I'm gonna give you a secret tip here. It will take about 6 to 7 light attacks to activate the self heal, but it only takes about 3 charged heavy attacks to activate the heals. So if you're using Swaddling Cloth, perform this unique Charged Heavy that lunges you forward to start your attack combos. This way, you'll receive your healing much quicker and easier. Don't forget to use Holy Shroud Cracked here as an extra buff. You're definitely gonna need Great Jar Arsenal and Shard of Alexander. For number 2, we have today's customary cosplay build. I give you Kratos, the god of ass kicking. Today, I will give you the highest damage potential, the most ass kicking version of Kratos you can possibly get. Because not only do I have a doctorate in cheek clapping, but I am also a magma blade expert. So, let's do this. Let's get to it. Typically, I would say use dual magma blades but I know that you have a better chance of getting laid by any living creature compared to actually farming two of these extremely rare weapons. So my setup will use one Magma Blade and one Bandit's Curve Sword. The Magma Blade's physical damage scales with strength, but the fire damage and weapon art scale with faith, so that's what we will focus on. With the Bandit Sword, quickly swap over and use Flaming Strike. This will set your sword ablaze, which increases fire damage. To get the highest attack power, you want to use Flame Art Infusion with a high faith level. This will skyrocket the AR on this weapon, especially after using fire type buffs such as Flame Grammy Strength, the Fire Scorpion Charm, and the Flame Shrouded Crack Tear. These buffs directly boost your fire damage. But that's not all my friend, the madness does not stop there. This dual wielding moveset is absolutely bonkers, extremely fast. So if you also stack on successive attack buffs such as the winged insignia and thorny crack tier, well, let the cheek clapping commence. After all that, you will melt through everything. You will become a true god of war, clapping the gods themselves. Flame Art Infused Bandits with Flaming Strike or Crag Blade, Shard of Alexander, Rotten Winged Insignia, Fire Scorpion Charm, Thorny Crack Tear, and Flame Crack Tear. And that is how you clap cheeks. In the number one spot, the Holy Torpedo. I have this build at number one because this playstyle is actually enjoyable. It's a fun challenge and has a very high damage potential. With the Silurius Tree Great Spear, we can blast off its weapon art from a distance. So I'm using Shard of Alexander, Godfrey Icon, and Ritual Sword Talisman to get wild damage. Godfrey Icon because this weapon art charges up, and Ritual Sword Talisman because the goal here is to fight from a distance. So it's easier to keep your health topped off. 
just far enough where your weapon art can still connect. If you can keep your health full, you'll get that extra 10% damage. So we staying at a safe distance and shooting out holy torpedoes. You can also go ahead and cast the Crucible Horn or Crucible Tail, or whatever you want really. But as far as weapons go, the Silurius Tree is all we need. A couple tips to keeping your health bar full is firstly, use defensive buffs like Golden Vow and the Opaline Heart Tier to minimize damage. Plus, spells like Blessing of the Ur Tree for healing over time. This is another Strength and Faith hybrid build, but this time more focused in on this strength. Please comment all your thoughts and opinions on the builds here, and if you have any questions, leave them down below. I will answer it. Thank you for watching my fellow jabroni, peace out.